That would be great. Okay, so I need help with my bell ringer. I need to know something that will factor out of all of these terms. I see your hand, ma'am. Go ahead and tell me. Uh, can you only do number two for me? Yes, go for it. You can have my chair. Someone else have number one? Something that, yes, ma'am. Tell me what factors out of all of them. 10y to the fourth, z to the third. And what were you left with? Uh, 3x to the fifth plus 5z squared minus x. Squared minus x. Okay, so she took out a 10. 10 times 3 is 30. I know she's right on that one. 10 times 5 is 50. I know she's right on that one. 10 times negative 1 is negative 10. I know she's right with her, um, with her numbers. Now to check her variables. Y to the fourth, z to the third, x to the fifth, that's exactly what that one had. Y to the fourth, z to the fifth, because three plus two is five, correct. And then the last one, y to the fourth, z cubed, x, oh yeah, she's got this down. Hopefully we're all able to at least factor out that the ten and the factor like this. I get I'm not asking you to factor factor yet, thank the Lord. Okay, number two, I would love some help with this. At Hold on one second, ma'am. Apparently, we got someone else who's got this. Ashley, you want to tell me what the answer was? Okay. I'm so impressed that I have two people in this class period that know how to do this one because no one did in first period and only one did in second period. Can you tell me how to set this problem up? I know. You gotta do the portion stuff. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, notice there is a triangle here. And they're asking you about this triangle. If you read the problem, they ask, what is the distance of the ravine? So since we don't know, I'm going to put an X. I know the length on that green side over there is going to be 18 because BC is 18. And then, of course, I've got this other triangle over here that is going to be proportional to this triangle. Because they, they have their AA, but that's a whole other thing. So I'm going to do 18 over what number? Do I do 22.5 or do I do 10? 22.5. 22.5 equals ha, x over 10. You cross multiply and you get 180x, 180 good equals 22.5x. And I assume when you divide it by 22.5, is that what you got eight with? Perfect. Yay. Just awesome. Me. I just solved it by seeing, I guess I got lucky. I solved the 10, and then I saw the 18, so I was like 10 plus 8. Oh, yeah, 18. you got so lucky with that. That was lucky. That was definitely lucky. Okay, so if you understood how Julianne and Asher helped us set up this proportion and cross multiply, I'm betting you rocked the last test. If not, if that looked a little complicated to you, then I bet you missed the one on the parameters of the shapes. I could probably pinpoint which question you missed and blew the most. That's kind of sad, but it is what it is. Dear. Do what? I'm so proud of you. I'll give you a sticker later. Yay. Okay, so today's notes. If you notice, there are two learning targets. That always scares me. I think that the teacher's trying to do too much at once. But that's not what's actually happening today. Both of these learning targets are going to be super easy and super fast. So the learning targets both have one keyword they have in common. What word is that? Proportional, which means we're going to have two fractions that equal two sign. We're going to cross multiply. So that's not going away, hence the sign. Okay, so first we've got to do something with triangles, and then we've got to do something with parallel lines. So triangles, I like to use my colors. You don't have to if you don't want to. I see this baby triangle living inside this giant triangle. So they say this piece, which is Rx, over this piece, which is Xc, is proportional to or equal to Sy over Yt. So they're using a tiny piece over the baby triangle, tiny piece over the baby triangle, cross, multiply, and solve. It's a lot. That actually sounded way more complicated than it is. Let's go ahead and look at the first example. So I'm going to do 3 over 8 equals 
x over 12. So I did 3 over 8 equals x over 12. Wait, okay, so you pretend it's a triangle, like a little baby triangle? Yes, I do. I pretend like there's a little baby triangle, and I tend to put the baby triangle in the numerator, hence why 3 and x are both in the numerator. And I tend to put the big boy triangle, well, the piece remaining, okay, in the so denominator. On the, on the one side. Yes, if you notice, that's one of the fractions, 3 and 8. And that's the other fraction, x over 12. You can cover up the sides and see it, too. She's right. Now... If you did your fractions completely reversed, that's fine. As long as you're keeping up with things, like 3 goes with x. So either they're both in the numerator or they're both in the denominator. Okay, you cross multiply, you get 36 equals 8x. I need a decimal. Okay, so I'm going to put 4.5 equals x. If you wanted to leave it as, you could have reduced that fraction to 9 over 2. But we're really, you know, last section I told you I really was wanting fractions. This section, I'm over it. I'm totally cool with decimals. Just decimal away. Uh -huh. Decimal away. Okay, so I'm going to do like 6 over 18. Mm -hmm. But we're going to save number 2 for a second. Why am I going to save number 2? Because it's got two of the X's. It's got two pieces with X's, and the X's have a little more stuff with them. So I'm going to save it for a second. And instead, I'm going to say, let's see. I want Caitlin and Jesus' group to try number one. I want uh, Taylor and Danye's group to try number two. And I want uh, Juliana and Savannah's group to try number four. Number four. So everyone has a problem. As soon as you have your the answer and you think you're right, shout it out for me and we'll, we'll check. And that way, every group only has to do one problem like this. <clears throat> number two is you, ma'am. Try number two. Shout it out, Will. X equals seven. Great. X equals ten. Number two. Two is ten. Yep, go ahead. Yes. Mm -hmm. I got I no, ma'am. No one had three, five, or six. Uh, hold on and off. There you go. You're good. Okay. So everyone had a problem. They had to work. Make sure you at least copied yours down. I would write all three. But make sure you at least copied yours down. So let's see. Natalie had five of... No. Taylor had... No. Will. Good gravy. Somebody had 5 over 5 equals 7 over x. They cross multiplied. They got x equals 7. Natalie had 20 over x equals 18 over 9. She cross multiplied. She solved. She got x equals 10. And then I don't. Dylan for sure had 24 over x equals 30 over 10. He cross multiplied. He got x equals 8. Now, I did all this really fast. And I did all this to tell you that... Well, I love you dearly, and I love to see your work. I do. I love to look at your work and tell you where you went wrong. And if you think you're going to make a mistake, this is what you need to do. But let's be honest on this type of a problem, especially those of us who are good at fractions, you probably could have guessed that since 5 over 5 reduces to 1, this one needed to be 7 over 7. So did you actually have to cross multiply and solve it all? No. Or on this one, 18 over 9 reduces to 2. So 20 over what reduces to 2? It would have to be 10. So on most of these, by my knowledge of fractions and multiples, I can guess the answer. So 30 over 10, that reduces to 3. So it would have to be 24 over 8 because that reduces to 3. But if all of that sounded like gibberish to you, then you need to fraction, fraction, cross, multiply, solve. Are there any questions about those three? Okay. Then we'll go back and be brave and try example two. Natalie was right. I am going to do, well, 
How did you want to do it, Natalie? Did you want to do 6 over 18 or 18 over 6? What? No, example 2. I did, I did 6 over 18. That's fine. I did, yeah, I'm, I did small. Okay, so she did 6 over 18. So do I put x plus 22 in the numerator or x plus 2 in the numerator? Uh, I, I do because that goes with the 6. Perfect. Thank you, Danielle. Okay, now we've, we've upped the challenge a little bit. The proportion wasn't any harder to set up, but we've got to cross multiply, and we'll have 6 times x plus 22 equals 18 times x plus 2. Here is where I've noticed some people have an issue on their test, and it's something I thought we had talked about numerous times. When you distribute that 6, your answer should not be 6x plus 22. Your answer should be 6x plus... Yes, so it's, is it... Is it, it is 132. Thank you, Danielle. I was having to use my brain for a second. Yes. But yes, you have to multiply to both of them. And if you're not, and you're not getting 18x plus 36, then no wonder you're getting weirdo negative answers. Dylan, <coughs> you did this on one. I, no, I hadn't seen your test paper. It wasn't you. There was someone in here who got a weird negative, and if they had just asked me, I swear I would have pointed out where they forgot to distribute. It's not you, Dylan. I wanted it to be you, too, but it's not. Because I haven't seen yours. You wanted it to be me. What is that supposed to mean? I don't know. I wanted to know who it was who had made the mistake. That, that did come off the wrong way, didn't it? Okay. That did come off the wrong way. My bad. Okay. So I have 132 equals, because I'm out of room over there, 12x plus 36. Yeah. I'm going to keep solving. I subtract 36. I get something equals, what is 96. it? 96. 96 equals 12x. When you divide by 12, I think she's right, and you do get a, I need someone to confirm that. Okay, someone else confirmed that. She is correct. Awesome. Thank you. I don't know why I'm doing Christmas colors today either. Okay, are there any questions about that one? Do you have to plug it back in? Do you have to? No. Would it be smart because you're wanting in the A? Yes. So you know 18 divided by 6 is 3. When I plug it back in, I get 30 for this one, and I get 10 for this one. Well, 30 divided by 10 is also 3, so I know I'm right. So if you're wanting to 100% know you've done the right thing, then of course it would be smart to plug it back in. If you are on the row closest to me, so Natalie, Caitlin, and Dylan's group, try number 5. I've already done it. Perfect. And if you are, I've already done them. You done them all? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna let Natalie tell me the answer to number two. This row, try number five, and then the back row. So Jesus, Danya, and Savannah, try number six. Your I groups. Do number three, I know. Oh, I know. Number five. Did you say five? No, I need to do. Oh, you already did two. I need yeah. five and six. I need five and six answered. Okay, Shout it out when you got five or six. No, well, you can if you want to. Five or six. Six is five. <laughs> Someone else shout it out if you agree with her in a second. Five is six. She said. Well, six let me. Five. Yes, ma'am. You're doing number. Yes. I, sorry, Savannah. Yes, dear. Supposedly. I don't know. I'm about to try. <laughs> Excellent. That's what I want to hear. Mm, debatable. Okay, so I heard the wrong answer on number five, and here's why. So, yes, it's x over x plus 12, but it is not 11 over 33, which is what I assume you did if you shouted out the wrong answer. It is not 11 over 33. Since we did x over x plus 12, we actually need 11 over 22. So whoever had number 5, there's a little bit of a harder problem because you had to do 33 minus 11 is 22 first before you could even set up your proportion and cross multiply. Cassie, on your way back, hurt off the heat before I die. Thank you. I don't know. Trying to kill me. Okay. And then the other one, What? Did, who told me that answer? Five. And what did you get, Savannah? Did you get five, too? Uh, it, 
Okay, so x over x plus 10 equals 10 over 30. So 30x equals 10 times, and I can't put in parentheses, x plus 10. Oh. So I have 30x equals 10x plus 10. So 20x, oh, it's 100. Miss Compton can't distribute. So x equals 5, and that's awfully written. Let me zoom in on that one. Say it again, Hasey. You're not, are you doing this times this? No, I'll put 3 over x plus 10 and 10 over x. Okay, make sure if you do 30 over x plus 10 and 10 over x. Hey, Sus, I'm doing this is one fraction, and this is another fraction. One side is one fraction. The other side is the other fraction. That's what I've been doing. Okay, Dylan, do you understand where the 22 came from? Okay. And now I'm not going to have the perfect YouTube video. Thank you. Blown. YouTube video blown. Okay. Are there any questions about the five or six? Okay. So you knew the whole length was 33. Yeah. So the length of this tiny piece had to be 22 plus this, because 22 plus 11 is 33. The whole length was 33, not just that piece. Ma'am. How I messed up is um, I forgot the 11x. Mm -hmm. I saw other people who forgot the 11x. Mm. So they didn't do 11 times. Oh, the 11x. Oh, okay. I understand that. Like the I understand that. So if there was normal like that, you take that 33 minus 11 and get that intro thing? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's why number five is a little bit more difficult to me than number six. And then my answer is showing the number three, but I need to talk about it with you. Any? Are there any more questions about five or six for you, three? Okay. So number three, we have a bit of an issue. Tell me what makes the triangle number three special. And don't say anything silly. Because someone in second grade said something silly and just put me in a bad mood the rest of the day. No, that was silly. Yes, dear. It has congruent sides. It has congruent sides. So this line is cutting those sides, this side and this side, directly in half. When that happens, this is called a mid-segment. So what I'm about to use is called the triangle mid-segment theorem. That number three. Oh, you do, you do. Because it is exactly in the middle. It is exactly in the middle. You gotta find base one. We've gotta find what this number is. Oh, that we do with that little. Um, yeah, it's not even gonna be like with trapezoids. She's trying to make it too hard. It's gonna be super easy. So hear me out. If you ever see this magic triangle that has the sides cut directly in half. Then all you have to do to find the mid-segment is take the third side and divide by 2. So 35 divided by 2 is 17.5. So x is 17.5. Only if the sides are cut immediately in half. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, so there's good news and bad news in life. The good news is that we're halfway there. The bad news is I plan on talking about this 